Hey, I'm Fare. To seek the Chinese government blocked Intel's big new acquisition, global smartphone sales are having a really terrible time, and tablets are taking a really weird turn. Welcome to the Fare Checkout. This video was sponsored by Bellroy. Okay, this week we start the brief with the Xiaomi Mix Fold 3, which finally launched in China with very promising hardware and the very disappointing news that it once again won't be available in international markets. That is sad. And continuing with foldable, the Chinese brand Techno is becoming the next Android maker to make one, with leaks showing that their foldable will have a circular outer display, which, yeah, I guess, why not? Moving on to less high-end phones, Nokia released the G310 in the US, which is basically just a rebrand of the repairability-focused G42 that comes with a 3.5mm headphone jack, a micro SD card slot, and parts via iFixit for $186 on T-Mobile. Then Windows report published what appeared to be the first images of the upcoming Lenovo Legion Go device that basically asks the question, what if the Nintendo Switch was actually a Windows 11 PC? The images seem to show an 8-inch screen with two sort of Joy-Con controllers that can be removed and a wide Switch OLED-like kickstand that you can actually pop out for tabletop gaming. I don't know how far this category of handheld gaming devices can go, but there sure seems to be a lot of energy behind it. And then in Qualcomm news, it sounds like the next Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 will get even more expensive than its predecessor, while also only using TSMC's 4 nanometer and 4P process, as Apple booked basically the whole 3 nanometer production for itself. And talking of Apple, the company has reportedly already started to produce the upcoming iPhone 15 in India as well, which may be a promising shift for the Indian production. In the past, iPhone production in India reportedly lacked China by about six to nine months, but apparently that is now down to just a couple of weeks, so that's a pretty big deal. Next, people on the internet figured out that X was adding a full five-second delay to links going to the likes of the New York Times, Washington Post, which are sites that Elon Musk personally dislikes, as well as competing services like Threads and Blue Sky. The company confirmed that the delays were removed after the reports were published, but didn't elaborate any further. Next, also this week, Netflix started testing its first cloud-streamed games to TVs and web browsers. These are pretty much the same Netflix games that you could previously play on a mobile device, and you will also need a phone as a controller for the games for now. Maybe this is interesting, I guess? And finally for this week, Linus Tech Tips got under heavy fire this week, the likes of which the YouTube community hasn't really seen in a long while. First, the YouTube channel Gamers Nexus published a 40 plus minute video detailing how Linus's sloppy testing practices and a culture of negligence in the organization has led to a bunch of false and misleading videos, and even to them auctioning off a one off exclusive prototype of a small startup that they promised to give back. And then second, a former employee came out with a stomach-churning series of tweets detailing a ton of abuse and misconduct and even sexual harassment and just a generally toxic corporate culture at the group. The initial response from Linus was pretty poorly thought out, which further added fuel to the fire, and now the company's newly appointed CEO is in full damage control mode, even promising that they will completely reorganize their working processes and launch an investigation using external professionals. Let's see where those investigations take us, but so far none of this sounds good. Okay, and for my first story of the week, China has torpedoed Intel's huge bid to buy Israeli chipmaker Tower Semiconductor. Intel says that 18 months after they announced the acquisition for $5.4 billion, they didn't receive a regulatory approval from China within the agreed timeframe, so they now had to give up on the deal. Intel will have to pay a pretty hefty breakup free of $353 million to Tower Semiconductor, which is a kind of standard clause in these merger and acquisition deals, but yeah, that's pretty painful. So who is Tower, why did Intel want them, and why did China block this deal? Tower is a contract manufacturer for chips, kind of like TSMC, just focused on more niche applications like RF chips and CMOS image sensors, so often analog chips with less of a focus on transistor sizing. All of which is to say that they have a lot of experience as a contract manufacturer and that they also have relationships with 300 plus major chip companies. As Intel wants to build its own huge contract manufacturing business, they wanted to buy Tower to kickstart this process and to absorb those contacts and their learnings. 
China basically looked at this and decided that, that nope, they actually don't want an American company to be able to skip the queue like this by just buying this company. So they decided no, and since Intel sells a lot of their products in China, they have to listen to this ruling. Just this month, the Biden administration released their latest rulings aimed at holding back Chinese tech companies again, so I guess it's all a tit for tat for now. Okay, and for my second story of the week, this year looks like it will be the worst year for smartphone sales since 2013. And if your memory doesn't quite stretch back all the way there, that is the year that the Galaxy S4 and the iPhone 5S were released, so that's quite a long time ago. And apparently next year might be even worse. So we got a bunch of reports from various firms confirming this, and a few weeks ago Counterpoint reported that sales in the US in particular were down 24% year over year in the quarter, with Apple falling 6% and Android smartphones declining 38%. Ouch! Also in China, phones have fallen to their lowest rate since 2014, and basically all other major markets are down too, meaning that this is not really an isolated geographic trend, but really a worldwide phenomenon. And worst of all, both Counterpoint and industry players like Qualcomm and Sony say that the slowdown will likely continue with no visible light at the end of the tunnel. My takeaway is that long-lasting phones are great for us the consumers, but they're pretty bad for the brands. Apple is the only brand bucking the trend as their sales have basically remained stable, which in a shrinking market is kind of a miracle, and foldables are the only category that actually managed to grow, meanwhile all others are down. And I think it's worth acknowledging Tim Cook's foresight that he managed to pivot his company away from focusing on just handset sales and over to focusing on the services much more in the last couple of years already. Just over a quarter of Apple's total revenues already come from services now, and this is by far the fastest growing and the most profitable part of their business, which really helps offset any slowdown in hardware sales. Now, if this sad affair with phones sounds familiar, basically the same thing happened with the PC market that peaked in 2011 and has been on a slow decline ever since, and it seems certain that the phone market is following this long-term trend too. And fun fact, PCs are also doing terribly, although the chip makers there are saying that we've kind of reached rock bottom at least for a while, and that the PC market should actually start stabilizing now. Okay, and for my third story of the week, two really weird product news caught my eyes that are, I think, kind of related. First, there's an LG TV that is also a briefcase. That's right, it's called the Stand By Me Go, it just went on sale this week, and it's a 27-inch 1080p LCD device running LG's WebOS with a touchscreen, 20 watt speakers, and a weirdly short 3 hours of battery life for something that's literally a suitcase. There should be space for more batteries there. Anyway, the thing costs a thousand bucks and it can be swiveled, tilted, and rotated, including to be used as a tablet that supports all the WebOS apps and AirPlay and whatnot, but with a touchscreen. I think that technically makes this the first ever WebOS tablet, at least I couldn't find any others out there, and LG is actually not the only company that is focused on making really big screens kind of portable. You know how Samsung has their almost comically large 14-inch Galaxy tablets? Well, those could get even larger because Samsung's mobile chief has actually confirmed that Samsung is developing foldable tablets and laptops all in the name of letting us carry as big a screen around as possible. And you know what makes carrying any screen around an absolute pleasure? That's right, a backpack from Baroy. <laughs> Since I bike a lot and it's raining half the time here in Berlin, I recently started using one of their backpacks myself and I really like it. I got their waterproof Venture backpack and I was really impressed with all the thoughtful design choices that you can notice in all the little details throughout the bag. It is made with recycled nylon from industrial waste on the outside for a durable feel and recycled polyester from water bottles on the inside that is actually ultra soft. I love the compact shape of it as a light duty backpack, there's a smart quick access hook on the front that I haven't seen before, there are waterproof zippers all around that seem to really have a great seal, the bag unfolds completely for access to bigger objects, there are a ton of hidden pockets, and the chest strap is actually magnetic, which is a delight. The more you look, the more you realize just how much thought was put into it in a way that is indicative of Bellboy's whole product line. They have smart wallets and key holders that are compact but durable, they have phone cases for iPhones, Samsungs and Pixels that are really quite beautiful and can hold a few extra cards if you want, they have stylish protection for AirPods and AirTags, and they even have this dedicated tech pouch which helps you organize cables and stuff as you travel around. Bellboy is also a certified B Corp, so the materials they use are actually sustainably sourced. Products like my backpack here are made from some of the 10.5 million water bottles and 60,000 kilos of industrial nylon cutoffs that they claim to have upcycled so far. They use leather with special dry tanning processes that they 
claim has helped them save 15 million liters of water, and so on. Using my link in the description, you can get a 10% discount on any of their products, so check them out. I hope you find something good, and I'll see you next week.